Hello guys, I hope you've been well. So welcome back to my channel. Today we want to do some small finite element. The main objective is to determine the best number of seeds for the lookout structure, which has a beam section. So if you use a truss section and you put a uniformly or a UDL, uniformly distributed load, you'll have some errors when it comes to job analysis. So that's why you have to use a beam structure. So we also have to use the self weight have to include the self weight we have given the material properties as shown so the lookout structure is as shown there there is the lookout structure so and it it has its own diameter of the beam is a circular we are taking it to be a circular section of diameter 10 millimeters so remember in abacus we have to make sure that we con we, we stick to one unit one form of unit so we'll have later to convert that millimeter to meters so let's go to sketching so we start our sketching create our part there are my my previous tutorials have shown all the steps of creating the parts so there are some section i'm going to jump so we create our lookout structure as shown and also we have to put it in 2d wire form wire deformable in the sketch so make sure that you save your project, always save your project. So yeah, make sure that you always save your project. So we create our part and you make sure that your approximate size is enough, but you can always change it. You can always change it later. So yeah, to deep plan our wire and then make sure it's deformable it's not a discrete so now we put 40 we put 40 as approximate size and then we continue yeah. now I'm, I'm done with the sketch now here you have to make sure that all the members are independent like each member between each joint it is a member so you have to use the split tool you have to use split tool to split all the members as shown so they would just don't press so you get this split as you can see that member is too long yeah like that now it's split yes now you, you can just investigate the other members investigate the other members to see if there are any that need to be split I think everything is okay. Everything is okay now. So we finish. You cannot save your project at this point. You have to finish. You have to click as you close, you close, and then you, you close there as shown. Then you say done. Now you can save now. Now we go now to creating material properties. So here this is where we use, we put our elastic modulars, our density, and our poisons ratio. So this is where I put all those. So just click there. We have we are using steel. So we go to density. Our density is as shown here. 8050 kg per meters cubed. Our E is 200 E power 9. So we put our density as 8050 because it's already in kg per meters cubed. Now our elastic properties. So we have 200 E9. 200e9 and then we have our poisons ratio as 0 0.3 have our poisons ratio as 0 0.3 now the next thing is to create the section to create the section that we want so we want it to be a beam don't select the truss so you want to use a circular section circular section as shown so just pick the beam don't go to the truss Now here we, we define the section that we want to make sure that you put 0 0.3 there and, uh, and then because 0 0.3 is our Poisson's ratio then our circular section our circular section so it has a diameter of 10 so we have to convert the 10 into a radius so 5 millimeters and then we divide by a thousand so it's 0 0.005 then we say okay and then now we are good to go 
save control save as you can see i'm saving as i go now we assign we assign the section to the model and also the beam orientation you have to make sure that you do that because it's a beam so we assign the section so we just click the section part done and then you here you have to select the circular section you'll see we will have multiple parts and then i'll make an error i think i made an error somewhere but it was intentional so you'll see in part two of this video so we assign the beam orientation you have to assign this so by default just click there so that you can leave it by default and you say okay I don't need to assign again, so you close. Now we go to create the assembly type. The assembly type. So we go to create the assembly type. We want it to be independent. Put independent, not dependent, independent. On part, independent. Mesh on instance. So that one, we, if you want to change the number of mesh, the number of seeds, it will be just on instance, not independent not dependent on the part so you can see the field output request is not yet active it's because we have not it's, we have not put the steps the loading steps now we go to the step now by default it's usually initial step that's where we put our boundary conditions now we put the loading step this is where we are going to put our loads even our gravity so this is our loading step so we select a static general yeah, this is where we put our loads this is where I put our loads, we say okay. Now our field output request, as you can see, now it's okay. Now, but we only need stresses and displacement. Right click, edit, and unselect. Unselect strains and contact. Just leave displacements and stresses. Leave them there. Now we set up the loads, gravity, and also boundary conditions. So once you go to the loading tab, Go to the loading step. Now we need that part, that node. Now we put. Now we put our our loads as shown. It's ten thousand newtons in the x direction. CF one is for x. CF two is for y direction. Now we do that for the all the other nodes as shown. As you can see, the direction of force is indicated. So if you put it the wrong way, it will indicate the wrong one. So as you can see here, we have, they are similar. They are similar. Therefore, you can actually do multiple points or members by holding shift, down the shift and then clicking with your mouse. Just hold shift and click with your mouse. And now we have to put the UDL, the UDL of 6000, put the UDL of 6000, it's at the top, so we have two members there. So you just click shift and then you select line load, it's a line load. So and then you click shift, then you left click, left click like that. You know that it's Y and it's minus, so it's going down, just like that. So now the next thing is gravity. The, for gravity, you don't need to select anything. Just come, come to the load, the loading part. Change that to gravity. The main reason how I'm renaming the loads is maybe I might want to edit something. That's I want to be certain. So it's gravity. Then you put it 9.81 meters per second squared. In the y direction minus so it's there it's assigned it's there at the bottom you can recenter or you can pan your you can see it's there at the bottom so that's the way due to gravity that is the way due to gravity now we go to create our boundary conditions so we use initial initial so that we have to pin the, the bottom part they are pinned so you don't use encastre, you use displacement rotation because you want to pin in the x and y direction but it can rotate in the z direction they are not fixed they are pinned 
So Encastra is only available for, is only good for pinned, it's, sorry, it's only good for fixed joints. So you select U1 and U2, leave U R3 alone. So now we are done, now we go to the meshing part, to the meshing and seeding, to the meshing and seeding. So here you can change the type of mesh that you want. You can change the type of mesh that you want. So you can just select, you can select the part that you want to mesh. Let's go back again the element type element type that you want yes now it's highlighted now here i want to use with cubic formulation a beam with cubic formulation so i select cubic formulation cubic formulation and then i say okay you can always change this if you want to so now i say done now i go to the number of seeds i mesh on edges edges so that i want i want the number to get to mesh by number okay now by edges now you select you have to make sure that the whole model is red in color or the color changes now i want by number so we start start somewhere there with four so that's how my meshing will be done so you say done so it has not been meshed so you have to go and mesh and then you say instance and then you say yes so as you can see we have a number of mesh sizes one that two elements have been created so now the next part is to create the job is to create the job we create the job for this for this project so you can have multiple jobs in which or where you can always come and revisit back so let us create our job like that, so you say it's job one that two elements, and that two elements. Then we say okay. We say okay, and then we submit the job for analysis. Submit it for analysis. Yeah, you can even do data check before submitting, but because I know there's a low risk of as you can see there is another job one in that folder so i have to rename it so that it doesn't overwrite it so i just rename it not edit rename i rename it to job 132 job 132 like that so now we are done so we submit and now see in the next part two of this video where we will do a convergence analysis and also review the results of how the model will eventually look like. Yeah, always thank you very much.